What's on your radar, Kim? Well, Russian tennis player Daniel Medvedev, who also happens to be the reigning number one men's tennis player in the world, is being told he cannot compete at Wimbledon unless he denounces Vladimir Putin. As it is, Russian and Belarusian tennis players are not seeing their country's flag next to their names during matches, nor hearing their country's anthems. They're competing as neutrals. Their tennis federations have been suspended and they've been banned from team international competition. But the UK government says this isn't enough. They are demanding Russian players give public assurances that they are not supporters of the Putin government or else. Nigel Huddleston, the United Kingdom sports minister, made this point during a parliament meeting Tuesday, say, stating over and over and over that he absolutely doesn't want to see the Russian flag anywhere at Wimbledon. OK, well, this problem has already been solved. Russian and Belarusian players didn't have their flag seen anywhere at the recent California-based Indian Wells tournament. But his indignation continued anyway until he said, I think we need to have some assurance that they're not supporters of Vladimir Putin and we are considering what requirements we may need to get assurances along those lines. Well, I have an idea. How about we bind them up and throw them in a lake to see if they sink or float? Over the past few weeks, we've seen scores of Russian anti-war protesters being thrown in jail over their opposition to the invasion of Ukraine. This isn't new. The West has asserted for years that Putin is a brutal dictator who silences his opposition. So it stands to reason the British government would understand there is a real risk to speaking up. Yet they demand it anyway. They want Daniel Medvedev and other Russian athletes to, according to their own claims, risk their lives and possibly their loved ones lives in order to play at Wimbledon. These are athletes who have no control or power over what's happening in Ukraine. It makes no sense. And it's actually dangerous. Is this where we're headed as a society? It was one thing to virtue signal on social media to elevate one's social status, but it's an entirely other thing to force people into proving their virtue or they can't participate in their careers. We're still experiencing this with vaccine mandates. You still can't enter the United States unvaccinated, even though it's well known that vaccines do not stop the spread of COVID. We've known this for a long time, yet people, even those with natural immunity, were punished for not going along with the morality of those in power. Another tennis player, Novak Djokovic, is still being banned from playing in many tournaments because because he refuses to get a vaccine that doesn't even slow the spread of Omicron. He didn't obey the morality overlords, and because of it, he's being punished. And now it's Medvedev, who is being told he must make a public statement denouncing Putin or risk his career. He's already stated he supports peace. Here it is. My message uh, is always the same. You know, I, I want uh, peace in all the world, all the countries. Um, Actually, don't know how many there are in the world, but every country, you know, that's what uh, I think every tennis player is going to say the same. It's always, you know, tough to talk uh, on this subject for me because uh, I just, you know, I want to play tennis. We play in different countries. I want to promote my sport. Um, I want to promote what I'm doing uh, in my country for sure also. And um, right now the situation is that that's the only way how I can play. So that's what I'm going to do and same, I'm going to try to fight on the court, try to, to win the tournaments and try uh, to beat other guys. So the statement isn't enough. The world wants more. Babylon Bee, a parody website, made this posting that feels more like a future forecast than a joke. Medvedev has worked really, really hard to be the world's number one after spending a considerable amount of time in the top five. He's no Nadal or Federer or even Djokovic, who all have a slew of Grand Slam championships under their belts. But he's still young. At only 26, he's crushing it. He's number, his number one status is short-lived, with Djokovic expected to reign again this week. But this was because, for some reason, you could maybe even say psychological, Medvedev lost to a player married to a Ukrainian at Indian Wells. The crowd loved it. They loved seeing Russian Medvedev be beaten by a man with a Ukrainian wife. The crowd having their favorites and villains is fine. It's expected. What isn't expected is for authorities to actually ponder banning players over virtue issues. Are we headed towards a society of a social credit system where people are judged by their beliefs and actions and those actions then translate into whether or not they can hold jobs or participate in society? Because it sure feels like it. So now um, some other news that kind of a, a radar I did previously about Novak Djokovic is he is going to be allowed to play at the French Open. They do also expect uh, Medvedev will also be allowed to play at the French Open. I don't think the French are asking for the same thing that the British are asking for. The French have now dropped their vaccine mandate, so they're letting Djokovic in. They're also, you know, I don't think going to tell Medvedev he needs to go and denounce the government because that does potentially put 
himself at risk being men's number one tennis player right now, being kind of a hero in Russia. And suddenly, if you're denouncing the government, that could put you in a position that's not so friendly when you get back home. Um, he doesn't live there. He lives in France, right. actually. But still, it's, you know, this is a very, I, it, what, what are we doing? I mean, why, why would we make a citizen who has nothing to do with the war or their government, has no power, denounce publicly and put themselves at risk? Why do we, for, is it, you know, and I, and I could sit here and say, what's, you know, uh, the slippery slope, right? What's next? Is this, is, where are we leading? And people might say, no, no, it's not a slippery slope. It's just this. It's just that. You know, it's just vaccines. It's just Putin. Right. No, it's not just these two things. This always does lead to something else. It's like the statue removal. Everybody laughed when people said, OK, what are you going to do next? Go after Abraham Lincoln. And people scoffed and said, oh, come on. No, we're just going after Confederates. And then they actually went after Abraham Lincoln and the statue. Yeah. So, yeah, what is in the next? San Francisco schools. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, there are there are slippery slopes. But I also do think it's useful to take these, these particular ones case by case. And the difference between this, which I don't actually think is defensible, I, I agree with you on this, but I, I also don't think it's comparable to vac vaccines in the sense that that's something that tennis is asking somebody to do. They're saying you need to be vaccinated. They're not saying that you need to give a statement that Pfizer and Moderna are glorious savers of, of humankind. They're just saying we want you to, for public health reasons, we want you to take, to take a vaccine or you can't play. But it was in still virtue signaling. It wasn't. We knew at that point the science had been. You know, people were discussing it. They weren't following the science at that point. It was the, virtue signaling. It the, was like we all had to do it, so now you have to it, do it. It all goes back to that conflation of stop and slow again. Yes, it's it's true that the vaccine, even with Omicron, didn't didn't stop the spread, but. It did slow it because you're less likely to get infected. You're less likely to get hospitalized. Like for a few days. I mean, likely. barely. It wasn't. It wasn't for very long. What? What wasn't? The slowing of the spread. I mean, it, it wears off. That aspect of it wears off very quickly. In fact, and that's why they're now saying you have to get four doses of this thing. It makes you. It makes you less um, because you get less sick if you've had the vaccine. You're less symptomatic for. So you're. You know. You're, you're less. less if you're sprint. coughing and sneezing less. I don't, you're going to spread it. But, then you're less uh, but I, it, I agree with you. It, it, I mean, Omicron <laughs> spread like wildfire. Yeah, doesn't matter. Despite all mitigation efforts in place. So that's correct. And yes, I agree with you. I think the, the, it's funny that the, the, the mandates are kind of going away, or it feels like they really are. And mm -hmm. we'll just look back at this kind of brief, brief on the historical scale, not brief for the, any of us who lived through it, but brief time period where, oh, yeah, it was, it was like, oh, my God, you're going to be required like your your health is now a public record, a matter of a public set. You're going to have to have all these things in line to go anywhere, do anything, which was a terrible idea. Now it's kind of now it is kind of thank God it's going away right. somewhat. And, hopefully, and it's going to be like, oh, yeah, remember that? Remember when there was that moment where it was like, yeah, I need to show you my vaccination card to like enter Subway. Like how insane yeah, was that? The Subway yeah, and Subway. Ho hopefully it'll go the same way as the Spanish flu, where people are like, actually, no, I don't remember that. Like in yeah. 1919, like 1920. I like don't the, think the, we're not going to. I don't. <laughs> but here, here's, I can't imagine us not remembering this. I know, but here's what's amazing: 20 plus million people died in the Spanish flu. Did you guys? I mean, I, I have. I happened to read a book about it like 10 years ago or so, and I was like, wow. We okay, but that's, that's a generational. Okay, right. So in generations from by, now, they might the not. By, by the end of the 20s, they're like dancing and partying, and everybody just wants to forget this horrifying yeah. experience. And it did not, like all of the restrictions, the civil liberties restrictions that were in place, which also included at the same, roughly the same time, Eugene Debs getting thrown in prison for opposing the war, all of those things kind of faded. Uh, but it looks like we're moving on into new things, which is this, OK, you need to show us your your virtue passport now. But that's the thing. I don't I don't I don't think there's a connection between. I do. I feel the, like people are now. I, I mean, look, like I even for my upcoming wedding, my photographer is Russian and he was like asking, you know, emailing, saying, is this OK? Is, is it OK? Oh, yeah. But I don't think I don't think, think that yes. but, but xenophobia yeah. against right. the other is not. It, it, maybe there, there, are, there are new elements. Well, I, I said this in a previous radar about how I, I thought it, it, it's a little different to have the sort of liberal, intellectual, artistic, commanding heights kind of requiring this. Whereas I remember this being kind of like during 9/11, rock war being kind of a you know the conservative, you know the the deplorables are the types of people who want to do this. But but just xenophobia against 
but enemies you don't in think war is an is a you know is it's something an old that, thing. Yeah, but I mean, the Japanese, hating the Germans in World War One. Right. It's an old part of. I know. It's, uh, well, I'm hoping we don't actually go in that direction, but I do think that people, you know, if they're wearing a MAGA hat, they're not allowed to come inside. I mean, yeah. I, I do think that they're, we're, we are leading ourselves down this path of virtue, a, a, ba a social credit yeah. system. Larry David had a great episode on that where he would wear a MAGA hat in L.A. so that people would leave him alone, and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so but, cult and also culturally, it's, we're there. It's, it's so yeah. hypocritical. Like, you're going to be required to denounce Russia and support Ukraine. In order to but, work. But you are not allowed to say anything bad about, if you say something bad about China, you can't, right. your, your, your artistic product and is not going problem. to be seen in the, right. no, it is a, pro a problem. It's totally hypocritical. Totally. It's, it's, it's but, appallingly hypocritical. Right, it's like, a social credit system. Or Disney wants to boycott the state of Florida or something over the don't say gay bill, but, but, will, will, but will not say anything against the, the Chinese regime, which is doing far more, far worse yeah. things to the, the planet Earth right. than Ron DeSantis. Right. Well, I think we've got Ryan's radar next. Looking forward to that. All right.